All right, welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today, man? Nathan, I'm good. How are you? I'm excited for today's show because it's, it's, uh, it's very near and dear to my heart. So I'm, I'm happy to be back on the call with you. Well, good. Well, let's jump into it. Um, the show's especially for business owners and about half of the people I mentor, my mentoring clients are business owners. But I talk to a lot of business owners who aren't my clients, some who will never be my clients. And when I meet them and they don't already have copywriting skills and experiences, I find they fall into three camps. There's those who want to learn copy, those who are thinking about learning copy but not sure it's a good idea, and those who felt some pressure to learn copy but they really don't want to. Okay, so I know that some people are zealots and they're pretty rigid. I mean, like other people in the copywriting space and the copywriting mentoring space, teachers, and they believe everyone should learn to write copy. And if you don't, it's like a mortal sin. I don't look at it that way. I don't think one size fits all when it comes to business owners learning to write copy. I think some it's a really good idea. Some it's not such a good idea. So I want to look at both sides of the question today. And I want to offer some tips that all business owners can use to make more money with their business, whether they are enthusiastic about learning to write copy or dead set against ever learning it. And again, both kinds of business owners are fine with me. What's not so fine is someone not being clear about it. You know, if you're feeling pressure and you are convinced that you shouldn't write copy and you don't have some solid reasons for it, I'm not cool with that. I want you to know both sides of the story. And I also want you to know this, that copy is powerful. You're responsible for how you use what you hear in this podcast. And most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims and if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health and finance and business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. So let's start with, well, why don't you tell me what you told me before we started about how you got into copywriting? Because I think there are a lot of people who can relate to that. Yeah. So I got into copywriting because I ran three businesses into the ground <laughs> and um, my third one, the, it was blatantly clear. The reason why that business failed was because I didn't have any understanding of how to market and how to write a compelling sales message. And uh, that particular business, we had relied completely on a, on a distributor to do all of our marketing for us. They had us over the barrel when it came to negotiations, and it was a very bad situation for our, for our software development company. And um, that ended up falling through. And when I went back to my team and said, hey, I have this other crazy idea for a new software that I develop. None of them wanted to do it. All of them said, hey, if you don't figure out how to sell what it is that we create for you, we're not going to create anything more for you. And so I had to learn copywriting and, and it was, um, it was uh, Ready, Fire, Aim by Mark Ford. So yeah, so somebody told me to pick up Mark's book, uh, Ready, Fire, Aim. I think he wrote it under the name Michael Masterson. And in that book, there was a couple references to copywriting, and I had never heard of copywriting at that time, but I, I was intrigued, and I went down the rabbit hole. You actually were the first person that I found when I started searching out how to copyright. It was an interview that you did on hard-to-find seminars. Oh, with Michael Senoff, sure. Yeah, and uh, there was an episode where you guys went through a template, and the the episode was actually like the template. You kind of went through and templated the episode like you would template a piece of sales copy. And it blew my mind. I was like, who's this David Garfinkel guy? I need to find everything I can about him. And uh, 
long story long, that's why I reached out to you and said, hey, I have to do a podcast with you. Okay. Well, cool. Well, so um, there, there are three reasons I have that a business owner should learn copywriting. And yours was like number three. Um, uh, you know, in, in your case, I think you were up for the task of learning to do it so you would do it. But more than that, learning copywriting really helps your business thinking outside of writing and editing and evaluating copy. You can certainly get that from, uh, um, you know, Ready, Fire, Aim, um, because that, that book is just full of copywriting-derived strategies and tactics, as well as ideas about copy. Copy is so results-oriented that it gets your thinking away from magical ideas like branding and someone else is going to do it for you and you can trust them, right? <laughs> Which was like where you were stuck with the distributor. Um, it, when you learn copywriting, it helps you keep your mind focused on results. It's possible to use branding, say, to increase results, but not without a coordinated strategy. And part of that strategy has to be some way to bring in sales. And of course, the most direct and I think reliable way is direct response copywriting. So knowing copywriting helps your business thinking outside of writing, editing, and evaluating copy. You also make better pitches to customers, clients, partners, funding sources, almost automatically once you know copywriting. It helps with other things too, like naming products, like negotiating, like dealing with difficult people. You may find creative ways in your communication to make your conversations more agreeable with otherwise difficult people. Because of everything you learn about human psychology in copywriting that I don't think you can learn anywhere else. So that's, that's, that's reason number three, because I wanted to start there because that was so much like um, what you were talking about, it seemed to relate to it. If you're a business owner who's going to become a business owner who knows how to write copy rather than the chief copywriter for your business, okay? And I, I meet a lot of business owners who are like that. Even if initially they learn to write copy, eventually they're going to hire copywriters. So reason number two is in an emergency, if you don't find the copywriter you like or the copywriter you want, isn't available for three months or their fees are not acceptable to you, you can write it yourself. Uh, even if you may not want to, being able to gives you a very important option. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is, assuming you're not going to be a business owner slash copywriter, but a business owner who writes copy, knowing copywriting really helps your business thinking. Oh, no. That was number three. I'm sorry. Even even if if you're if you're going to be a a business owner who knows copywriting, you'll have a much better eye for the copywriters you do hire. You'll be able to pick them out better, evaluate them better, understand what about their copy is good before you hire them, and find weak spots after they've written stuff for you. You know, I, I heard a story someone shared with me. It's very confidential, so I can't go into any identifying details. But the business owner didn't really know copywriting. He was an expert in another factor of marketing, and his business is starting to tank. And he was fighting the copywriter about stuff he didn't know anything about because he tried to do it himself before that certain way is a very effective way. And again, I'm being real vague because I want to honor the confidence, but he'd done it so poorly that he concluded that particular technique never worked. Uh, if he knew copywriting, he'd never be in this situation. And, you know, for, I'd say increasingly all businesses, 
copy is the lifeblood of your cash flow. So uh, with all of that, what do you think? What are you thinking? I want to add one thing. Product development. Understanding copywriting can really help you in product de development because when you know what works good in copy, you know, okay, I need to have something that sets my thing apart. I need to know what my USP is. Uh, you also need to know whenever I'm going to take on a client, I'm going to ask them, what are, the, what are the other competing solutions out there and what frustrates people about those competing solutions and how does your product or your service alleviate that frustration, alleviate those hurdles of disbelief that people are going to have. And so when you're coming up with a product, at least now me, when I come up with a new product, I'm actually having all of these things that I know from copywriting going on in the back of my mind that help lead where the product development goes. So understanding copywriting can help you actually create a more a product that's more likely to succeed because you understand the things that go into writing copy and you apply those into the things that go into developing what it is that you're going to try and sell or what it is that you're going to offer the marketplace. That's such a good point. You know, if you went to Harvard business school or um, really any, any traditional kind of, education that a lot of executives go to, you'd probably learn about a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. And you'd use that to make all kinds of decisions, including marketing decisions. Or you might learn about the four Ps or the six Ps or not taking a P during a pitch or something. But, you know, um, the problem with a lot of the traditional marketing stuff is it's very clinical. It's like you're, it's, it's sort of like you're the weatherman on TV looking at this landscape called the marketplace and this tornado is a threat and this warm front is an opportunity, right? And what you're talking about, Nathan, is something that they may teach in business schools, but I have yet to hear about it. And I'm sure now that I'm saying it doesn't exist, we'll get plenty of emails and Twitter things saying we're wrong. And that is the very personal stuff. People's frustrations, people's complaints. Not what people say in focus groups. Well, when I think of copywriters podcast, the color azure comes to mind. No, it's, you know, it's more like this water tastes like bananas. I don't, I want my water to be taste, you know, it's a very personal complaints and frustrations. Actually, it tastes like water. <laughs> I want to show you, it was not, not the actual situation, just a very far-fetched example. Copywriting teaches you that the market is made up of individuals who have feelings and the, the predominant feeling of one individual, predominant meaning there are a lot of people who have it, going to make a lot more difference. So great point. Great point. So we've covered a couple of reasons why business owners should learn sales copy and learn how to do copywriting. Are there reasons that they shouldn't? Yeah. You know, writing isn't for everybody. You could be very intelligent, very skilled and not be a good writer. And it, it you know, for a lot of people, writing is like, pulling teeth, like pulling their own teeth, like doing their own dentistry. Not a good idea. Um, if it's not the best use of your time, maybe you shouldn't do it. It's not for everybody. Um, if you've never been good at writing, and especially if you own the business and your strength is entirely different than, say, verbal communications, maybe it's coding. Maybe it's product design. Maybe it's, maybe, you know, I mean, I, I think of um, uh, some TV shows like Billions. Bobby Axelrod should not learn copywriting. You know, he's a good quant. He's good at figuring out the numbers and making deals. Um, you know, there are um, a, a lot of, a lot of, maybe Henry Ford shouldn't have learned copywriting. He was better at, 
inventing systems and coming out with a car and changing the face of America. Maybe Thomas Edison shouldn't have learned copywriting. Maybe Napoleon Hill should have learned copywriting to write about those guys. Oh, wait, he was a copywriter. Never mind. So it depends on the person. Um, he was also a journalist and a lawyer and a lot of other things, sales trainer. Um, so for some people, it's not the best use of your time. Now, there's another problem, and I've seen this. I bet you've seen this too because you take on clients now, right? And um, the, the business owner might be tempted to write copy when they're too close to the problem. They, you know, it's that old curse of knowledge thing. It's like they've been living with the product, with the way people use it, with the underlying problems that the product solves for so long that they can't, they can no longer put themselves in the shoes of the marketplace, of the people in the marketplace. And um, you might have a sense of misplaced confidence that you know better than a, oh God, this happens all the time. You know better than a copywriter who has some distance and can see things better from a prospect's point of view. Learning copywriting is only going to make that problem worse because it's going to give you a false justification and a reason to get your back up and to close your mind to hearing new ideas that could very well possibly work. A lot of entrepreneurs are very strong-willed people and, you know, kind of stubborn. And if your stubbornness is in that area, learning copywriting isn't going to make it any better. You know, I mean, that's, that's like almost an entirely different conversation about, you know, how to surrender to the better ideas of a copywriter than you can possibly have. I don't want to go there right now. But... It's, it's just not going to help someone like that. The, the other thing, the, the, the important third point is a little knowledge can be a really dangerous thing unless the business owner is really willing to go all in and not only study it, but have enough experience in the marketplace, actually write stuff, actually track the statistics, actually notice the responses of customers, including, you know, customer service complaints or even ebullient testimonials from happy customers really get involved the same way that a copywriter is. Not that they have to spend their whole life and their whole career in the business doing that, but they have to do that enough so they can understand what it's all about and what their copyright is going through. Unless they're willing to do that, they may end up thinking they can direct or even micromanage a more experienced copywriter on false premises. And this could hurt the business owner because their results will suffer. Your thoughts? Uh, I'm just wondering if you have any advice for finding that balance between knowing, uh, we talked about how it's important to know how do I grade whether or not, or how do I determine whether or not this copywriter that I'm going to hire is a good copywriter? How do you have that knowledge, but also be in a position where you're willing to let go and let the copywriter do their thing? Well, first of all, they're two different stages, aren't they? I mean, the first one is evaluating the person and talking with them before you ever sign a deal and write a check, right? And the second one is your working relationship with them after you've made a deal, after you've made a deal, and after you've written a check. So um, they're, they're two different things. Look, it's not easy. I, I don't have, it's a great question, but the, the reality is a lot of experienced copywriters say that unless you're making your client uncomfortable, you're probably not doing a good job with the copy. Mm -hmm. I, I guess part of it as a business owner is to learn that you're in control of a lot of things. It's your business. You got to the business to have more freedom and uh, more control over your life. But there's sometimes when it's better to, just like if you were going to court for tax evasion and you didn't evade taxes, 
you're probably not going to try and tell the accountant how to do their job or the lawyer how to do their job, even if you're an accountant or a lawyer, not if you're smart, you know. Um, and copywriting is a little more subjective, but maybe it's exactly the same thing. You, you need to learn how to let go a little bit. Yeah. And I think one thing that you mentioned and probably every, every good copywriter that's taken on a number of clients has experienced this. I know personally I've ran promotions where the client told me I'm not comfortable running that. And I've had to push back against them. And those are usually the best promotions. So you, you, as a copywriter, you're going to deal with it. And as a business owner hiring a copywriter, if you're hiring a copywriter that's worth, worth uh, their two cents, um, you're probably going to run into the issue where you're not comfortable with what they want to run. But uh, sometimes letting them do it is going to prove you wrong. Yeah, I think so. Do you remember on those occasions where you had to push back, if any of them turned out to be huge winners, like five-figure sales or six-figure sales? I know recently I ran a promotion and it was an affiliate promotion. So they gave me more leeway than other clients have because they didn't lose anything if I lost. They only won if I won. And there was two emails that I sent out that both of them, um, I know they made, I sent out a, a series of emails, but the two that I sent out the final day of the promotion, I know both of them, one of them was just a very lazy. It was like, look, I'm sick of promoting this. I don't care whether you buy it or not. Here's what you get. And here's why you should get it from me instead of from the other people. And it was a very simple one. And they said, that one's not going to convert. And that was actually the biggest converting one because I put, a, I put a big sense of indifference. I said, look, I've already made a ton of money off of promoting this. I don't care whether you buy it or not. And that ended up actually doubling the amount of sales that I got off of that promotion. Okay, that's good. And, and of course, they didn't, they didn't like that at all. How dare you say you don't care? You're, you're supposed to be our loyal affiliate. Right. Exactly. Okay. So um, let's pick up the pace a little. Uh, my fault, I've been running off at the mouth. Um, if you're a business owner, what do you do? Well, there are some steps you should take, like anybody else wanting to learn copy, especially like a professional copywriter. You read all the books. You read scientific advertising. You read my book, Breakthrough Copywriting. You read Gene Schwartz's book, Breakthrough Advertising. You do all of that stuff, all that all the books, we, we have a couple of episodes just devoted to books, books on copywriterspodcast.com. And listen to this podcast. And, you know, if you're, this is the first one you've heard, then go back on copywriterspodcast.com and listen to the first dozen episodes. Those are really good for an experienced person in business who's just learning about copy. And take some courses. One I particularly like, Carlton System dot com. It's John Carlton's course. I helped him develop it and the, in the first version, and I've taught it a few times. It has a virtual classroom, and it'll give you some feedback. Works well for business owners. So anyone should do that. Um, the different things that a business owner should do that a copywriter should not necessarily do, could do, but wouldn't be as, as helpful. Um, Talk to business owners who know about copywriting and actually use it um, because the concepts will make a lot more sense when you have them in that context. For example, I do a mastermind with John Carlton, Standall. We have a lot of business owners in there. They talk to each other. One of them is also my client, and he was referring to something that another person said at the meeting that you're just not going to get if you're not in that environment. Um, there's that one. There are other ones that are very good. I don't know all of them. I've always been impressed with what Ryan Lee does. I don't know him very well, but I feel, feel very confident recommending him. Dan Kennedy's programs are great too. Just being a copywriter is a weird thing and it's good to be part of a community. And the same holds true for business owners who know copywriting. Now, I, I just want to go over one thing, Nathan, that even if you never learn copywriting as a business owner, you should know there are a few things you can hire copywriters for that will make your life easier, make your margins fatter, put more money in the bank, allow you to 
do more things with the business or kick back a little more if you want to. The most important thing to know is you can use copywriting the same way you use cold calling. You can also, that is, to get new customers. You can also use copywriting for portions of the sales process, especially the most time-consuming or labor-intensive part of the sales process. Maybe not to close the sale, maybe just to make an appointment, maybe just for a series of steps on a big ticket item, to answer technical questions, deal with the prospect's emotional issues, maybe just to close the sale after you've warmed the prospect up live and in person. So that's the second way, portions of the sales process. Uh, One other way, you can use copy to develop the customer relationship and make additional sales the way Brandon Fredrickson talked about a few episodes ago on the the, uh, episode called Stop Leaving Money on the Table. People who buy from you once are more likely to buy from you again than new prospects are likely to buy from you in the first place. Those are three ways you can use copy to increase your business way above the cost of the copy without even making any major changes in your system. So there's a lot more you can do with it, but that's a good place to start. Nice. Okay, so we've given the the business owners out there and maybe uh, copywriters as well, a lot of stuff to chew on. Um, I want to just double plug what you said, because I've gone through most of the courses that you mentioned. I've read almost every single one of the books that you mentioned, and I still feel, and maybe it's just a bit of tooting my own or tooting our own horn. I still feel like the first 12 episodes, like you said, plus just the ongoing episodes of the Copywriters Podcast, I feel like I get a lot, frequently more value out of this podcast than I do out of a lot of the courses that I've spent a lot of money on on, or a lot of the books that I've spent a lot of money on. So um, definitely don't undersell the value of the Copywriters Podcast because I I feel like this is one of the most valuable resources out there for copywriters. I told you we have to start charging people to listen to it. (laughs) Coming soon. All right, David, um, if people do want to check out more episodes of the Copywriters Podcast, where can they go? They can go to copywriterspodcast.com. Awesome. All right, man. Um, Until next time, I will catch you later. See you later. Bye.